What's up, everybody? You are here with the Fly Guy, and today I'm going to be tying one of my favorite patterns for you, the Dub Bugger. As always, the fly tying recipe for this pattern will be included on my website and blog at tfgflies.com. And, you know, this pattern is a great little minnow imitation, and it's caught me a lot of fish over the years. If you'd like to see a video where this pattern was really productive, I'll go ahead and throw a link up in the description for you so you can watch that after the demo. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let's go ahead and start by attaching our thread to the hook shank. As you can see, I have a 6 aught glass bead on the hook already, and that is white. And go ahead and advance your thread to the back of the hook. Now we'll attach a white marabou feather. Make sure to measure it to the length of the hook shank and when you're tying it down, cut it down behind that glass bead. As you wrap those feathers down to the hook shank, it will ensure that you have a more uniform body as you move forward with the fly. Next, we'll attach two strands of crystal flash to each side of the marabou feather. Make sure that when you tie these down, that you align them properly, and don't cut the strands after you've tied in one side. Go ahead and loop it over top of the shank and then tie it in on the other side. This will make sure that those crystal flash strands don't pull out. If you need to, make a few insurance wraps back towards the marabou feather to ensure that they line up correctly. Now we're gonna go ahead and attach a rib. Today I'm using a clear mono rib. And now you're just gonna tie in a dubbing loop and go ahead and secure that down to the back of the hook. Advance your thread to just behind the halfway point and grab yourself a silicone or rubber leg. For this fly, I'm using a white leg that is barred. And you want to measure each side to one length of the hook shank. And you're going to tie it in almost identical to how you tied in your crystal flash. You'll tie in one side and then loop it over and tie in the other and adjust as necessary. This will ensure that the rubber legs or silicone legs that you use don't pull out. Now go ahead and take some securing loose wraps and wrap those rubber legs forward so they stay out of your way. Okay, let's get our dubbing loop prepared so that we can wrap it forward to create a body. Get your dubbing fibers aligned in the dubbing loop. Uh, as a rule of thumb, I make my dubbing loops about three times the length of the hook shank. And the dubbing that I'm using is a white ice dub blend that I make myself. It creates a nice translucent body once that material gets wet and I think that's why this pattern works so well. Get your favorite dubbing twister and twist those fibers together and make a nice uniform rope of material to wrap forward. Now go ahead and take your dubbing brush and brush out those fibers to make it look a little bit more buggy. You don't want those dubbing fibers to become trapped you want them free so you can actually brush them out a little bit later and you can blend them with the feathers that we'll put on in the next few steps. As we wrap this material forward, we wanna make sure that we pull the fibers back just to make sure that we don't continue to trap any fibers. Next, tie in your hackle feather, and you want to make sure that you tie it in close to the base of the feather, and you have the longest fibers up towards the front of the fly. And make a couple turns at the front of the fly before you start moving back. Once you reach the back of the fly, start counter wrapping with the rib and this will trap that feather in place. Make sure that you're keeping tension on the feather when you do this and to make two security wraps at the back before you move that counter rib forward. I've never had a feather pull out using this method and it just helps me make my buggers just a little bit more durable. Throw in a couple half hitches and grab your dubbing brush tool. Start brushing out those dubbing fibers and blending those fibers together with a hackle you've just tied down. I would recommend using a dubbing brush tool with fine teeth as it won't actually pull on the rib itself and it will stay in place. A bodkin, if you use it to pick out the dubbing, it will take longer and you have the potential to damage the rib you've just wrapped down. 
form a small dubbing loop right in front of the hackle and we're going to put some red dubbing in this loop. You don't need a lot, you just need a very small amount. Enough to make probably one to one and a half turns. We're going to repeat the process like we did with the body. We're going to twist that dubbing together and then pick it out with our dubbing brush. Then we'll wrap it forward and tie it down. The head of the fly is finished with a grizzly soft hackle feather. You'll want to again tie this in at the base and you'll want to make as many turns as you possibly can up towards the bead. Whip finish or half hitch and your fly is done. You could fish this fly pattern just as it is and it would do just fine. But I go one step further and I coat my glass bead with one coat of clear glitter nail polish and then I top coat it with Sally Hansen's. I make sure to let each coat dry before I apply the second. This makes the glass bead look like ice and it really looks cool and it's just something I do based on preference. And there you have it, the dove bugger. This fly is a great little minnow bugger. It imitates small bait fish and it really works well in creeks and streams and I fish it a lot for bass but I've caught northern pike on it as well and it would work equally as well for trout. Comment below and let me know what fish you catch on it and if you like this video go ahead and hit thumbs up and if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching everybody. Take care and we'll catch you next time.